Hello, hello, hello. This is Abdul Hakim of the Activist Nation, www.activistnation.net, for November 10th, 2014. Doing a review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook 10 inch or 7 inch. This is uh, my first review. Um, there's a lack of reviews on the net and YouTube for this particular product, and I have a lot of substantial and significant information to say about it, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, I'm gonna do this review in different parts. Uh, this is basically an index. The intro is gonna be the bottom line brief review. I'm quickly give you a summary of everything that's going on. Everything following the intro is just gonna be basically in, in addition to the introduction. So part two, I'm gonna give you important facts, quick tips, necessities, warnings, frequently asked questions, mistakes to avoid, um, big pointers when dealing with the Nook. In part three, details, intricacies, specifications, and comparisons with other tablets. And granted, I don't have all the tablets in front of me. It's going to be a comparison between the iPad, the Amazon Kindle HDX 8.9 inch, and the Google Nexus 9. I have the Amazon Kindle HDX 9, 8.9 inch, but I don't have the Google Nexus or the iPad, so anybody who has all those tablets in front of them are gonna be an advantage, but I'll do the comparison as best I can. Part four, recommended accessories, apps and additions, speakers, Bluetooth devices, applications that you should download on it. And uh, part five is how to bypass HDCP, high bandwidth digital content protection, HDMI protection, and this trick will work to bypass HDCP completely and totally on any device, PS4, Xbox One, any tablet, any smartphone, any electronic portable device. So it's an awesome piece of information. You really gotta know what it is in order to understand it. HDCP, HDMI protection. So how to bypass that, okay. With this introduction, I'm gonna be making assumptions guesstimating about your character and your preferences and the like. I assume that money is not an issue. You're looking for quality, you're willing to pay for it, you want a good product despite the cost. So that's my fundamental assumption about you. Okay, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 inch is junk. You shouldn't get it. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 10 inch is great, it's epic. Now. One thing you have to realize when you, you first see your first impressions of the Galaxy Tab and when you buy it, there's a fundamental that you should be aware of. And it's rather obvious, but it needs to be mentioned anyway because some people might miss it. Okay, so let's get back to the remedials here. The Nook, the new Nook is basically the Galaxy Tab 4. So when you're looking around for Barnes and Nobles and you buy your Nook, you're gonna realize there's no screen protectors, there's no stylus pen, and the cover that they recommend is just one style and it's poorly designed by Barnes and Noble. So you want a cover for your new device, but the cover that you see at the Barnes and Noble store is no good. And you realize, you know, you might think that, okay, this is the only accessories there are available for the Nook. But what you have there, that the particular device, if you buy it, is the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Any accessory, any addition that applies to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 could be used on your particular device, on the new Nook, because those two pieces of hardware are identical. What's different is the software inside. So you go to any retail outlet that sells screen protectors, or sells cases, or sells speakers, a stylus pen for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4, and you have everything that you need. You'll have your, you know, you can buy all the accessories that you want, apart from that of the Barnes & Noble store. <clears throat> the number one advantage of this new Nook is the integration with Google Play into the device itself. The Google Android integration is just great, it's epic. The amount of things you can do, it's capabilities, 
how smoothly it runs. The Google Play library is expansive. You know, it has basically just all the apps that you could buy, all the movies, all the audiobooks, all the all the music. Then you have, in addition to that, like uh, software and capabilities like Google Voice and remote control. You you could look up Google Remote and download a particular plugin into your browser and then download that same app onto your tablet and you remote control your computer from your tablet, which is awesome. For that particular service, like Log Me In, I would usually pay like $20 a month. Now you're able to do that for free, simply because of you know, the setup you have here. In addition to that, you have uh, maps. So, you know, you, you look up tips and tricks and capabilities within Google itself, plus the Google Play, and you have everything you could do with this particular tablet, tablet, which is epic. One person might say, okay, the real advantage is that you have both libraries of the Google Play and the Nook Store, but Nook Store is useless. I mean, if Nook Store were a physical location, it would be, it'll be a Blockbuster or a Sam Goody. No one would be there. You, you know, it would just be desolate. Okay, so no one really cares about the Nook Store. It's just there, but you don't use it. The real advantage is the Google, is Google Google Play. Um, the display is high definition, twelve eighty by eight hundred, which is fine for me. But I do realize, I am aware that people have a pet peeve about resolution. I mean, now we're up to 4K, which is 4,000 lines of resolution by 2,000 lines of resolution, which is ridiculous. I mean, what, what's next? You know, you have something that looks more clearer and brighter than reality itself. I mean, it's just an exaggeration. 1280 by 800 was always fine for me, even on LCDs or high definition t TVs, Blu-ray was going too far. But now we're talking about Blu-ray definition 1440 by 1080 on little 10 inch screens, which is which is funky in itself. I do have to mention though, in comparison with the Kindle HDX, the Kindle HDX has uh, 2,560 lines of resolution by 1,600 li lines of resolution. The iPad Air, has 2,048 lines of resolution by 1536. 1280 by 800 is probably the weakest out of all the competition out there. And I've considered the competition Google Nexus 9, the competition is Kindle HDX 8.9, and iPad Air 2. Going that far, is it's simply an exaggeration, really. The only place you're really gonna see a difference is when you stream from your device onto your LCD or high definition television. And then, you know, you might see a difference. It might matter that, you know, you're streaming from a tablet that's 1280 by 800 rather than 2000 by 1500 or whatever. The, the browser on this is Google Chrome. So the browser is great. I mean, you could look up YouTube, you can look up your mail and it doesn't crash and there aren't any problems with it. The browser is Google Chrome. Isn't any problem. It's integrated. There is a huge problem with capacity on these devices. You have to know about it. Okay, one of the things that you might have been enticed to, to purchase this tablet for is that, okay, originally it has 16 gigabytes of space or has 32 gigabytes of space, but you put a micro SD card in there and you get an additional 32 gigabytes or you get an additional 64 gigabytes. That's nonsense. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, you, in a way you technically do not get additional space on your tablet from putting a micro SD card on this nook, which is a huge defect. I'm not going to blame Samsung and I'm not going to blame Barnes & Noble. I've looked this problem up and it looks like inherently there's a problem with Android devices saving their apps onto micro SD cards. So what the micro SD card inside this tablet does is enable you to save media, pictures, movies, and files onto the micro SD card. You cannot save apps 
onto that card. Okay, so granted, today's apps like uh, Angry Birds, Plants vs. Zombies, Call of Duty, the apps that are high definition, the, the highly sophisticated and, and intricate apps that we have available in the market today, the apps that you're going to go out and buy, you can only get a few of them on this tablet because when you save or download this app, you cannot download it into the SD memory, the micro SD memory, you have to download it into the Nook memory itself. So, for example, the eight gigabyte Nook seven inch is actually limited to eight gigabytes. And when you buy a micro SD card that's 32 gigabytes, it's like plugging in a USB device. And onto the USB device, you could save music and movies, but when you download you know, Call of Duty for Android onto your device, it's gonna take up all the space. Okay, so basically on the on the seven inch Nook, you could download maybe three good apps. You could download Angry Birds, then Call of Duty, and then Dungeon Hunter. And each of those each of those applications, each of those games are, you know, fun, but they're big. They're like maybe seven hundred gigabytes megabytes 700 or 700 megabytes almost a gigabyte download two or three of those and the nook is full so you're going to fill up this thing guaranteed on the first week that you use it you're going to download three apps and on your fourth app you can't you can't fill anymore because the micro sd card doesn't save the apps it only saves music and movies huge defect and I, I'm seeing this is this I'm seeing that this is inherent in all Android, and it's I believe it's ridiculous. There is no reason on this world why you shouldn't be able to download the apps into the micro SD card, enabling it to really significantly expand the capacity of your particular Android device. This particular defect is huge. It's it's and it's pretty much ridiculous. You will fill up your Nook 7-inch 8-gigabyte tablet immediately. It's gone. And pretty quickly, you, the 10-inch won't last very long. Because at 16 gigabytes, it's a bit more, but it's not very much at all. I mean, for today, you know, if you want to have fun, you're going to need inherently 32 gigabytes onto your device. That's not much. If you really want to have fun and you're willing to pay for it, you, you go for a 64-gigabyte but granted, you know, it should, the, adding the SD card doesn't really expand the capacity. You know, you got to read the fine print on that one. Granted, hopefully there's, you know, there's an update coming soon that fixes that particular problem in which you're going to be able to store the applications into the SD card. When you first turn on the device, you have to sign up and you have to... Uh, it requires that you know you place your electronic signature with four different people. First, you have to sign up with the Nook Store, Barnes and Noble. Then you have to sign up with Samsung. Then you have to sign up with Google Plus, and then you have to sign up with Dropbox. And if you don't, if you skip over that, you're gonna basically be missing out on some of the crucial services that you have. Like the backup service is phenomenal. I mean, you, when you back up, you, it backs up everything. More on that later. And you don't want to s skip out on that. But the, the thing is that I've noticed that it's a quad-core processor, both the 7-inch and 10-inch. The 7-inch is really burdened by all the processors that are running at once. It runs really slow, the 7-inch. And I do believe it's because inherently in the background, in its, um, in its registry, it has Samsung running, Google running, Dropbox running, and Nook store running. And with all those applications running at once, it basically really slows down the, the, entire, the entire book. So in other words, it runs slow to begin with. Okay, when you first open it on day one, it's slow just because it's processing too much information at once. As you add on to that, if you add onto your registry, 
with all the service that the services that you want, the Magic Jack, the Google Maps, the weather, the Angry Birds, it's going to slow up even more. <laughs> it's going to get really slow. Um, it doesn't do that pretty much on the, on the 10 inch. Somehow the 10 inch avoided that burden of all those processes running once. The backup service is great. The backup service, if you if you have your device and you want to upgrade or you want to change your device to something else that's Android and something that uses Google Plus, it backs up all your settings. When you switch up, it'll have all your applications and it'll download your applications, plus your signing and password, username and password, plus whatever progress you made on a particular game, whatever level or how many points you scored in that particular game. So that's great. Um, okay, so that's it for the introduction. Part two. Essentials and tips. When you're first introduced to the Nook and you decide you want to buy it at the Barnes & Noble store, what you're going to notice is that the covers and the cases they have available at the store are no good. Or rather, you should know that they're no good. Okay, there's one design, one option available as a case for your particular Nook, and that option design is very poor. The reason why is simple. Magnets. The cover in the case available at the Barnes & Noble store for the Nook has magnets inside the cover. So when it closes, the magnets attract and keep the cover closed. And that's no good. It's not good for your CPU and your RAM to have magnets that close to your electronic device. What usually happens and what I usually do when I come across such a design like that because it's not obvious all the time whether your particular case that you're buying has magnets because sometimes they show off, the, these companies show off this defect and you can tell easily what not to buy, but sometimes they, they have it inside the case and you know they don't tell you. So when you get your case at home, what you have to do is you have to put a pin towards the case to see where exactly those magnets are, take a razor and take them out. The real idiocy about the cases that are at Barnes & Noble is that they have a strap on them. And a strap is good. An elastic strap to keep the case closed is great. But in addition to the strap, they have the magnets also. I'm thinking, fine, I paid $40 for this case, this cover. I'll just take a razor and take them out like I usually do. I'm not able to take out the magnets. I think if I cut the case with a razor, it just falls apart. So this case is completely useless. Like I said, this electronic portable device, this tablet, is really Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. So you look for the case accessory for the Galaxy Tab 4 7-inch or 10-inch, and you get the particular case. Make sure it doesn't have any magnets. Um, then, you know, you get your screen protector because, you know, screen protector is not really necessary. And you could live if you don't have a screen protector. And let me tell you, it's very difficult to get this thing on. What the trick is that you have to place the screen protector on it and it has, um, it's adhesive. But when you place it on, it's going to have hundreds of bubbles all over the place. And it's going to have dust and hair dust from the air that's going to be trapped underneath that cover. So you have to do it in a clean environment. And it's going to take you like four or five times. So you might have to, you have to buy a dozen covers until you can place the cover onto the, the device, onto the tablet in a way that it doesn't have a hundred bubbles and it doesn't have dust hair underneath the adhesive itself between the screen and uh, the cover itself. It, and this particular tablet itself, there's bubbles on the side. You can see there's, there's a bubble in the black space over here. There's bubbles in the letter boxes, but there's no bubbles on the screen, you know? And um, sometimes, you know, you get a certain person, and it's kind of funny, that they want to take care, they want to protect the device, but they, they don't want to go through the trials and tribulations, the crucifixions, the trail of tears, the pilgrimage, 
the expedition of putting on that screen protector on the device correctly. So what they do is they place it on and you see hundreds of bubbles all over the place and you see dust underneath it and it's just, it's crazy. You know, I wouldn't be able to use my device if they had that many bubbles underneath the screen protector. But some people would just, they do it like that. But it's real tedious, you just gotta get it right. You have to get used to it. You're not gonna get it right the first time. <laughs> you know, you're gonna buy a pack and there's three screen protectors in a pack. You're gonna go through all three of them. <laughs> you're not gonna get it right. Then you have to buy another pack with another three and pay another fifteen dollars until you actually get it right and it's worth it if you want to protect your if you want to protect the device. Um, Bluetooth on this tablet is incredible. It's it's really good. Any Bluetooth device that you want to use, it, you of course you know this is it's kind of a hasty assumption and it's kind of obvious on the face of it. You want to get yourself speakers. Because obviously, granted, you know, a lot of people, when uh, you do, you do a comparison or you start to look up other reviews of other tablets like the iPad and the Kindle HDX and the Google Nexus, people, oh, the speaker is in the back, the speaker is in the front, it only has one speaker. I am not a fan of inherent embedded speakers on tablets. Okay, because people they have this stupid tendency to turn up their tablets as loud as they can so they can fill the room with sound. You, don't you realize that there's only so much watts that could come out of something that small? And once you, once those speakers break because you're playing something too damn loud, once they're broken or they're blown, you're not going to be able to replace them. Okay. The only way to fix that is to replace the entire tablet, okay? One of the advantages of having something that's portable that you can take around with you on the road and you don't have to leave it at home like a desktop, it's that it's, it's really portable. You can carry it with you. One of the biggest disadvantages of having a tablet like that or even a laptop is that everything is embedded integrated. Okay, the graphics processor is integrated to the motherboard, it's integrated to the CPU, it's integrated to the RAM, it's integrated to the speakers, it's integrated to the modem, it is, it's all one thing. And any one of those parts break, the entire device is broken. You cannot take out that particular speaker and replace the speaker, you can't take out the particular CPU, replace the CPU, you can't take out the particular RAM, replace the RAM. Okay, one part is broken, the whole thing is broken, you have to replace the whole thing. I'm not a fan of playing embedded speakers on my tablet. It has to be external speakers. I'm not satisfied with embedded speakers listening to my tablet. You know, I'll listen to it a little bit if it's something I want to hear off of YouTube, you know, but I'm not going to be blasting music through it, trying to fill up an entire room with it, because that's just crazy. You're going to end up breaking your device. Um... Bluetooth speakers, almost necessary. But what you gotta remember about your Bluetooth speaker is that it has to be two speakers, not one. Because if you get a Bluetooth device that wirelessly connects to your tablet and it's only one speaker, it's mono sound. And it's not stereo sound. And so, some movies only play in stereo sound. You'd have a conversation between two people and if you have mono sound, you only hear one side of the conversation. Um, you know, like for example, a lot of the Bluetooth speakers available from I Love I L O, no, I Love I L U V, is mono. It's only one speaker in there, and you don't you want to avoid that. Um, this speaker, Creative Airwave, is two. And this lasts a hell of a long time. You charge it up, it lasts about seventeen hours. It's very loud. Granted, um, sometimes. Most of the times it's good. Specifically, when I'm playing music, when I'm playing movies, when I'm playing YouTube, I could I could hear it perfectly. When I'm playing audible audiobooks, it's not as good. It's kind of like it's a funky connection. So um, the connection could get funky, but you always have the option to connect it directly. So I listen to the movies and. I, Listen to my music. The music plays very well. Lots of watts in the speaker. 
But when I listen to audiobooks, because it gets funky, I, I connect it directly. And the option is always there. And direct connection to your speaker on your tablet device is always going to be better than a wireless connection. It's, you know, a no-brainer. Because it has to travel through the air, and plus it's, uh, you know, the, the antenna gets kind of bogged down. It gets burdened. Another essential that you have to know about this and this is somewhat of an assumption, somewhat not, is that you would want to connect your tablet to your high-definition television or your LCD. The seven-inch Nook does not connect to an HD TV at all. There's no way to connect that. You know, the 10-inch does. Now, it used to be on the early tablets that you'd be able to connect it with a micro HDMI wire directly into the input of the HDMI and I love that because you know it, it just worked great when you have a direct connection from your tablet through a wire to your HD TV or LCD with with a micro HDMI wire it, it worked but now they don't do that anymore what what's coming now is is a technology that's called Miracast and you have to see if your tablet is Miracast enabled. The 10 inch is Miracast enabled, and the seven inch is Miracast disabled. It doesn't Miracast at all. So basically you can't get an external, an external monitor on it. Um, it. Once again, what I mean when it's Miracast enabled is it, are you able to connect your tablet to your big screen? So you could watch whatever movie or game or whatever it is that you're doing on the big screen. Um, the best Miracast device that I know of is the Netgear Push 2 TV. This little device here, it's, a, it's, it's good. It works very well. And it could be funky. Okay, for the, the thing is that um, while it's, it gets a signal, there's no direct connection to the router there's no ethernet cable coming out of your tablet so it's receiving whatever video you're watching wirelessly and it's sending out the signal wirelessly and it's sending out it's receiving high bandwidth and it it's sending out high bandwidth so sometimes the video can skip um, I've noticed on this particular tablet and I'm not talking seven inch of course I'm talking 10 inch because the seven inch can't mirror cast at all but um, with Netflix, the video and the audio are kind of not in sync. Everything else is in sync. With Cinema Now, Voodoo, it's in sync. So it, it, it does get kind of funky. Sometimes it skips. You know, it, adds, it, it acts like basically there's a bad connection between your device and the mirror cast. But the, the, the thing is that these devices are constantly up, updating. And I did realize with the, with the last update on the mirror cast, Netgear Push 2 TV, that there was a lot of improvements. And I don't doubt that soon enough there's, there's going to be a Netflix fix for this particular problem in which the audio and the video does not sync when it's mirror casting out into my big screen TV. Um, if you, like I said before, if you want to know how to bypass HDCP, that's at the end of this broadcast. Um, I, a lot of people talk about, you know, reading books and magazines and comic books off of this device. I, I avoid doing that. Okay. I, I'd rather have an electronic book to read off of than, than to use my tablet to read. I mean, there's the Nook Glow Light if you want to read books or read magazines. So for some media, it doesn't really show on the glow light because what the what the glow light is the reading devices the electronic books what i call them are looks like kind of a calculator screen you could call it an electronic ink and it's really soft on the eyes and for you know if you wanted to read a facebook post you could simply go to your high definition tablet and read it from there but if you wanted to read an entire novel or the latest Stephen King or Terry Brooks, it'll kind of be difficult on the eyes to read it off your tablet and you want to switch up into 
you know, electronic book. And the electronic books are much preferable than a tablet for, for me, I believe. Um, I'm not comfortable reading a book on the tablet, even though I have to say that there's media out there. There's, there's some magazines and there's some comic books that you can only get on your high definition tablet and don't show on electronic books. You know, the seven inch I consider pretty much junk because it's very slow. Uh, what you have when you have um, milk processing in the background and you have Google processing in the background and you have Samsung processing in the background, it bogs down the device, it burn, burns the device. In other words, I do believe that the Samsung Milk 7 inch has the capability, you know, quad core processor and all, to run very fast. But when you first open it up, it's running very slow. And as you add on to the registry, downloading your Magic Jack and downloading your Google Voice and your Google Calendars and your favorite games, it's going to slow it up even more to the point that you can't really use it. It's really slow, the 7 inch. The 10 inch is fine. The 10 inch is not burdened by that. But the problem is, on uh, vice versa, one of the disadvantages is that. Um, the 10 inch is huge. And also, you know, I might as well mention this now, the seven inch is $180 right now, which is very inexpensive for this type of device. Um, but the fact that it's inexpensive and full of these bugs and glitches makes it feel like it's a cheap device rather than a good bargain. The 10 inch, on the other hand, you know, it has lots of advantages. The, the resolution is very crisp. The camera on it is uh, three megapixels. So it takes crisp pictures. Yet, you know, I feel that the device is too big. It's too bulky to hold on with your hand. You, you, you know, it's it's kind of a thing that, you know, you know, seven inch is good to hold and you want to take it out and put it in your pocket and stuff like that. And for the longest time, I was a big proponent of bigger devices and I was a big opponent of miniaturizing things. I used to hate the, the iPad Nano, the iPod Nano. Okay, the iPod Nano, little inky dinky tiny device I mean how small and insignificant do you want to make something until you know you consider it way too small and pathetic to be carrying around with you I was always um, a fan of digital SLR cameras okay Canon SLR cameras and you know I hated with a passion anybody who took out their phone or took out the little three megapixel cameras and started shooting pictures with, with these cameras with the poor resolution, it would, it would just make me mad all the time, <laughs> you know? And I'm saying use a digital SLR, especially today's SLRs, which have video and have microphones embedded onto them. And you could uh, delete or erase any, any kind of photo that you captured that didn't look right and recapture it and everything. But as time went on, I've kind of gotten reluctant on that stance. I'm not so steadfast anymore in that point of view because carrying around a digital SLR all over the place is a burden. <laughs> Nobody really wants to do that. People are just too lazy in this day and age to be carrying around a camera that heavy and that big all the time to take pictures of the things they like to see. So, you know, I've kind of scaled back in that sense. And, you know, you want, in other words, bottom line is you want your things to be portable. You don't want them to be too heavy. You don't want it to be too much of a burden. Okay, part three. Intricacies, details, comparisons. Like I said before, that I merits repeating. Basically, I don't have all the tablets on hand for this comparison. What I own is I own the Samsung Milk 10 inch, the 7 inch. 
I own the Kindle HDX 8.9 inch, the Kindle HD 7 inch, and uh, the, the Kindle DX, which is an electronic book, electronic ink. And the Kindle DX happens to be my favorite. I would be at a disadvantage to anybody who owns all the major tablets. And I'm saying all the, all the tablets within the comparison that I'm doing right now. And I think they're equal enough. It's, these are the major competitors as far as I see. Like, you know, granted, I can't put every single possible tablet out of the market. But I've, the, the major competitors that I have here for the comparison is, of course, of course uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab Nook 10-inch. Not the 7-inch. I'm doing the 10-inch. iPad Air 2. The Kindle HDX 8.9 inch, the Google Nexus 9, and the Microsoft Surface 3. Now, I'm going to do my best to give you comparison within all those tablets. Like I said, I'm at a disadvantage to somebody who would have all the tablets physically on hand to be able to hold them and use them in front of them. But I declare and I claim that I did enough research to make a comparison within all those tablets for you here and now. And it's about the fundamentals, you know. It's basically dynamic of what we're doing here, okay? When you have a tablet, you, you want there to be mirror cast technology, be able to project what you're seeing on your electronic portable device onto your big screen TV. You want to have access to your library, your media library of video, music, books, audiobooks, newspapers, and such. You want an apps library. All of those comparisons could be done by reviewing or studying or researching what these tablets are capable of. I can see which tablets can project onto a big screen TV which tablets have Bluetooth in them, can use Bluetooth devices, how extensive the library. I think that's the most critical point here. If you're going to make a comparison between the Microsoft and the iPad and the Kindle and the Samsung and the Android and whatever, it's the first thing you're going to go for, okay? Besides the screen size and the embedded mic microphones and the embedded speakers is the size of the library, okay? The size of the library, as far as the movies and the apps goes, is the most significant element of the tablet that we're we are dealing with here. And then, you know, nitpicking. It's a competitive market. And within this competitive market, we happen to have the electronic portable devices, the tablets, happen to be very competitive as far as resolution, as far as the CPU processor, and as far as the RAM. It's all maxed out in specs it's all way up there you know so it's kind of null and void as far as i'm concerned and this is another assumption or maybe not the resolution and the watts of the speaker and you, the process of cpu and you can't really compare them because it's different architectures anyway i have to say that um off the bat we start with the worst, and that has to be the Microsoft Surface. Microsoft Surface 3 has to be the worst. I mean, I promised that I wouldn't talk to you about price, and I'll leave price out of it, assuming that cost is not an issue. You want the best value for your money, and you're willing to pay whatever price for the best product out of the market. Yet, I am going to mention price and go back on my word. Microsoft Surface 3, at the minimum, cost $800. $800 in the library that is has ac access to is the Microsoft Store. <laughs> it doesn't have many apps and many movies and many videos. And, you know, it's nowhere near its competitive stores. Google Play is a behemoth. And the Apple Store is another behemoth. <laughs> you know, those are big contenders. And Amazon, as far as the 
HDX devices, tablets, you know, the HDs. Another, you have three behemoths. <laughs> and, you know, maybe it's not, you know, busting chops, you know, busting balls on Microsoft itself. Not so much that it's lacking or that it's poor or it's so mediocre. It's pretty much that it's dealing against competitors that are so much larger than it is as far as the media app library. The price for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 is the best, which is $300. $300, and I'm not talking this is cheap, so you should get it. It's the best value for what it has available. It, it is an excellent price, excellent value for the 10-inch tablet electronic portable device that you have here with access to the Nook Store and the Google Play Store as far as its capabilities, Miracast and Bluetooth and such and its library but um the resolution is 1280 by 800 resolution on the, the tab, galaxy tab 4 1280 by 800 is probably the weakest resolution out there with the ipad air 2 going 2048 by 1536 with the kindle hd 8.9 2560 lines of resolution by 1600 lines of resolution phenomenal um, and then you have the Google Nexus 9, which is 1536 lines by 2048 lines. And the Microsoft Surface Pro, which is 2160 lines by 1440 lines. So here, the, the Kindle HDX is killing it. And it boggles the mind of how on a device that has a screen 8.9 inches, you have two... 1,560 lines of resolution by 1,600 lines of resolution. It's phenomenal. I've always considered it kind of weird, wacky, and funky. The lines of resolution, okay? Consider that we have 4K now on televisions. You could go out, you could buy yourself a 4K LCD or high-definition television out on the market that's 4,000 lines of resolution by 2,000 lines, okay? I considered high definition, which is 1280 by 720, to be sufficient. And then we went on to Blu-ray. Well, Blu-ray was 1440 lines by 1080 lines, or 1920 by 1440. And I was just like, oh, come on, guys. Now we're going on to 4,000 by 2,000? You know, and for a device of 8.9 to have 2,560 by 1,600 when it's only 9 inches big, I mean, that's a, it's an exaggeration. I'm like, what do you really want? Do you want something that's better than reality? <laughs> what, what are we looking for here? And I, can, I see that it's a pet peeve of many people that, you know, that the, the, the lines of resolution could be such an issue for so many people out there. And I, when we have 4K monitors and stuff. And I, I do admit that it does make a difference when you mirror cast or you broadcast your display from your tablet onto the big screen TV. When you broadcast it like that, perhaps the lines of resolution becomes more significant an issue. But like I said, um, Kindle HDX 8.9 is killing it in this field. Um, it has the maximum lines, more than the iPad Air 2, more than Microsoft Surface and stuff. But the Samsung Galaxy Tab is lagging behind in this area, 1280 by 800, which I think is fine if you're going to have 10 inches of, uh, of viewing space. But hey, whatever. Um, uh, processors is kind of difficult to compare the processors because there are different architectures. It used to be easy back in the day with the desktop laptops to see which processors are was faster than the other but now they're changing up the architecture so you really can't tell like i don't think i can compare the ipad processor cpu to anything that's out there because the architecture is so alien in comparison to everything that's out there but it's a quad core which is a plus but it's a one two one point two gigahertz quad core you know and um the ipad has 1.5 the kindle uh, the Kindle has 2.2, 2. 
the, the Google Nexus has 2.3. And, um, you know, the Microsoft Surface is using an i3, Intel i3, which is something that's alien to me. I don't know how to compare that to anything. Okay, well, now we have the RAM. The RAM on the, the Google, I mean, the RAM on the Galaxy Tab 4 Nook is 1.5 compared with the iPad that's one gigabyte compared with the Kindle HDX which is two gigabytes the Google Nexus which is two gigabytes and the Microsoft Surface which is four gigabytes of RAM the camera now we're talking about the rear facing camera you have the front facing camera which is the camera that you use for Skype that you'd be watching somebody and somebody's watching you, you're watching the screen. But most people use the back facing camera, which is the camera you take pictures of and um, you know, you upload that to Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And I'm talking about the, the rear facing camera, otherwise this would take too long. We got three megapixels on the, the Galaxy Nook, on the iPad Air, five megapixels, on the Kindle HDX, eight megapixels. On the Google Nexus 9, 8 megapixels, and the Microsoft Surface, we have 5 megapixels. Um, GPS, all of them had GPS. All of them have good battery life, varying from 10 to 14 hours. I'm not going to get too much into the battery life. It's all about 10 hours, estimated 10 hours on every one of them. Um, the Galaxy Tab weighs a pound iPad Air 15 ounces, Kindle HDX 13 ounces, Google Nexus 14 ounces, and the Surface 14 ounces. Um, now the, the Surface, I'm not sure how much it weighs. I couldn't find that. The Surface wasn't 14 ounces. Microsoft Surface, I, I think it's heavy, but I'm not sure. They, they didn't advertise it. It's probably heavy. It's probably like two pounds, probably something like that. It's difficult to relay this information and it's difficult to, to kind of share the sentiment that this 10 inch screen is big. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit burdensome, you know? And the thing is like, the reason I have both nooks, the seven inch nook and the 10 inch nook is that I didn't have the patience to wait for the 10 inch to come out. The seven inch, came out first and then two months after the 10 inch came out but I purchased the 7 inch and I asked the representatives customer service representatives hey listen are you going to have a bigger screen available because I don't really want this I'm going to buy it but I don't really want it I want the bigger screen and they said they had no idea if they're going to come out with a bigger screen two months later it was available so I had myself the 7 inch so I got myself the 10 inch now I have both and um, the 7 inch was useless it was junk and the 10 inch is very good but one of the, the, one of the pitfalls is that basically it's 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 really big you know and and it's hard for for me to tell you to find the words to tell you you'd have to get used to it you would have to purchase the tablet yourself the 10 inch tablet carry it around you know realize that you know it's heavier than most tablets and it's not as portable. Seven inches is a good size. You get eight point nine inches. It's very good. Eight like nine inches is very good as far as a, a portable electronic device. It's very good. And then uh, ten inches is uh, you know you know it's a bit too big. <laughs> you, you know I'm, I'm kind of well you know but I'm not going to complain about that too much because I, I I've been fiending for the, the bigger size screen for all this time. I've wanted the big, bigger size screen and now that I got it, I can't really complain about it. Granted, it, it needs to be mentioned, when Google Chrome first came out, it was awful. Um, Google Chrome, uh, it, it was just, it was awful, especially in comparison to the Internet Explorer and Firefox and Next and Opera whatever browser that was out there in the competitive field of internet browsers but it, it an update was applied to the chrome application and after a few updates it easily became the best the best browser out there the point is 
one of the first things that I've mentioned on this review is, you know, the date, November 10th, 2014. And that's significant because an update could come along and that update would change the entire dynamic, change the spectrum from A to Z, from one side to the other side. And I do realize that, you know, um, granted Microsoft Surface is horrible. Microsoft has had awful luck in the tablet field. It was one of the pioneers, the innovators as far as tablets. For some reason, Apple did the same thing. And when Apple did it, it was the biggest success that anybody's ever seen, you know? It was just like huge, massive success. Microsoft just has bad luck on tablets. But granted, I'm willing to admit here and now that they could, you know, get their act together and all of a sudden realize that having such a poor library isn't in anybody's interest. And possibly they could adapt Google Play into the Microsoft Surface 3. If they do that, which is easy, easy enough, I mean, they could just agree to partner with Google Play and all of a sudden the entire extensive library that they have is integrated into the Microsoft Surface, Surface 3 and, you know, it, that would be fine. I mean, it, it'll make that tablet a lot better than what it is right now, which is something that nobody's going to buy. <laughs> you know, um, granted, I would like to see partnerships across the board. You know, it, it'll be like, well, you know, the fact that Google Play was actually integrated and partnered with the Nook Store wasn't such a big deal because the Nook Store was utterly nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fan of Barnes & Nobles, but, you know, Nook Store was dead. But I would like to see a partnership, perhaps, with Google Play onto Amazon. I mean, that would be a behemoth partnering with another behemoth. And I mean, you could imagine what would happen if Google partnered with the Apple Store. I mean, that would be, I mean, why not, you know? I mean, why can't they agree that the other's apps, library, media, music, video, could be used on the other's tablet, you know? It's just something that is a, it's a no-brainer. Everybody would be, would be a winner in that such a scenario, you know? And I can imagine, you know, Google Play being integrated and partnering up with Apple Store, you know. But, but the thing is that, you know, like I said, the first thing you want to look at is the size and the apps that are available and within the particular libraries. And the major libraries right now, the libraries that you're foremost concerned with when it comes to these tablets, is basically Apple Store library. Google Play library, which is the top two. Then you got Amazon, which is a close third. And these three are behemoths. And then you basically have Microsoft, which is lagging behind with basically nothing dismal, destitute library that it has, the Microsoft store. We have had a recession and there've been many stores that have gone out of business there have been many people have been laid off. Uh, ventures have failed. And throughout this entire recession, you know, people have been fiending and, and spit coming out of their mouths, just screaming, you know, close, go out of business, you SOBs, you pond scum, decrepit, no good piece of garbage, horse manure. Go out of business, damn it. You know, the, the Home Depots, the Starbucks, the McDonald's, you know, all these businesses that don't pay fair wages to their workers, they don't care about the environment. The businesses and the popular culture, the American businesses that are strictly and purely about profiteering and exploitation, you know, those guys that take their jobs overseas leave Americans with no work, okay? And they make most of their profits and from American public. 
Okay, they, they incorporate all their businesses in some other country, in Canada or in Europe or in the, and in the Bahamas, simply because they don't want to pay American taxes, but they still want to make American profit. Okay, those businesses that are purely about profiteering and exploitation, screw them. Okay, I want to see them go out of business. Take it to heart and keep it in mind. You want to be careful of who you give your money to, okay? If the person you're dealing with is a scumbag, do not give the scumbag your money. So what if that scumbag has the best price on the market? It has to be more than just the consumerism has to be more about the cheapest product or the best price. It has to be more than that. You have to be conscious. People have to really use critical thinking when shopping, okay? Don't deal with Walmart, okay? Walmart doesn't pay its workers fair wages. Don't deal with McDonald's. McDonald's is really unfair as far as workers and, you know, has this false image. You have to, you have to personify these people. You have to manifest these people and, and decide definitively, apart from, you know, just... Who has the best prices? Do you want to deal with this company in, in question? Okay? And granted, Barnes & Nobles is a company you want to deal with. I like giving my money to Barnes & Nobles. Okay? I like spending my money there. Whether it is on, you know, a cup of coffee or the, a new magazine or a book or buying their nook. Buying both nooks. Buying the both nooks they have available and spending $500 plus accessories Six hundred dollars. I'm buying the Nooks as soon as they came out. And granted, the hardware is good. Okay, so that is a big advantage, and that's something that you have to look out for, as far as you know, as time passes. Will they come up with this update that changes the entire architecture of the seven-inch Nook? You know, if they come up with a sufficient update. Because the 7-inch the, the is bogged down by too many processes in its registry. It's just too much going on there. For, from the moment you first turn it on, it's bogged and burdened, and it's overwhelmed by the processes, by the Samsung processes, Google, by the Nook Store processes. And it, it's just, it's so slow and sluggish. And I, I want to see that update as far as the 7-inch is available, uh, is concerned. I want to see that architecture update to make it, to make it not only, uh, you know, with a $180 price tag, a good value, but a good buy. And part four, for this part, we're going to dwell deep into the entire Nook universe. I'm going to recommend to you the apps that I use and recommend to you the accessories that I, I am using. So most definitely when you get your Nook, you, you got to download Polaris Office simply because an Office application, as far as Android devices go, or even in the Apple Store or the Microsoft, um, the Office applications that enable you to type up letters and do PDF files and do PowerPoints, they always cost around, on average, market value $15. Here it's free, so you you have, and it, and it's free, and and it's good. I mean, I I purchased an Office program on my Kindle from the the Amazon library. It cost me fifteen dollars, and every time I want a new feature, you know, it charges me more money. If I want a spell check, it's an extra ten dollars. If I want to be able to save in certain formats, it's another ten dollars. Polaris Office has everything embedded in it and you don't it doesn't nickel and dime you for other features okay um you know you have your magic jack magic jack is awesome um you know you pay like maybe ten nineteen 19 dollars for a year in phone service use and anywhere you have a good internet connection and does require high bandwidth internet connection you uh you could use a f your phone to contact people on through through your tablet so, in other words, you know, if you're familiar with Magic Jack, Magic Jack is a phone that you can connect, connect to your computer line, but that 
particular company has an app, an Android app that you download onto your tablet. And with that tablet, you have access to the same phone number you would have with the physical home phone you would have on your tablet with an Android app. So that's a big plus. Um, you know, you have uh, your voodoo movies, your Cinema Now movies. I'm not sure how much of a fanatic you are, but um, I'm, I'm such a movie fanatic that um, I use the Cinema Now service, Amazon, Amazon video streaming services, and I use the voodoo services. You see that I also have Netflix and Hulu, and plus you have YouTube. And YouTube um, is known for being funky on Android devices, especially on my Kindle. I have huge problems with it. Here, you could stream from the browser or you could stream from the app. And you can playlist. It doesn't crash. There isn't any issues with it. I have my uh, Audible. Um, any any game that's available on the, the, the Google Play Store, I can also download that. You got your maps. Um, and Google Voice is a, is a big, uh, good addition. You get free text. And um, you have to be familiar with Google Voice. And basically, I can do an, an entire chapter an entire series of how to use Google Voice but if, if you know about it it's an excellent addition to a, to a tablet also Plants for Zombies to to be honest with you and you know keep this between me and you don't tell anybody but one of the major reasons if not the, the prime reason for buying this tablet is because it had access to the Google Play Store and the Google Play Store had Plants vs. Zombies too. The Amazon store, in which I was using my Kindle HDX, 64 gigabit, gigabyte, is um, it didn't have Plants vs. Zombies too. It doesn't have all the games. It has many of the games. It has, um, you know, out of all the, the apps that you have out there, Android apps, it has maybe 90%. But one of the games that it didn't have was um, Plants vs. Zombies too. Go figure that. Um, Dropbox is awesome if you want to um, if you want to take a photo, add it onto your desktop, have that accessible to you, to your laptop, and then pick it up on your Android device or drop um, a picture from your Android device and pick it up and open it up on your desktop. So that's that's also awesome. Okay, congratulations! You have made it to part five, the final part of this review for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. This final part, I think it's significant. It's the Bypass HDCP. And I, I looked at other people doing reviews of tablets on YouTube to, to see you know, if I'm missing any points or if I can adapt any kind of trickery or any kind of um, you know, talent to my presentation and stuff. And what I've realized is that nobody really knew how to bypass HDCP. Okay, quickly for those who don't know, for the novices and newbies and noobs, there's something called high bandwidth digital content protection. HDCP for HDMI for electronic devices that connect through HDMI cable. There's a signal that goes through that HDMI cable which blocks the ability for you to record anything. And it's really big headache. It was a big headache for me because, you know, I wanted to record from my PlayStation directly into my Roxio Game Capture Pro HD. And, you know, I wanted to record anything that's HDMI, record off of my tablet, Miracast, that has HDCP protection. So I can't record any of that and you know it was just driving me nuts what did I have to do to bypass that oh, I spent many hours purchased this device purchased that device it was the wrong model you know spend so much money and finally I was able to I was able to find the particular product that was that, that bypassed that signal and basically it's the view HD HDMI splitter you know, and um, this HDMI splitter, when it takes one signal from the HDMI going out from a your video game system, electronic portable device, tablet, smartphone, and such, and splits it into two signals, 
basically it doesn't carry over the HDCP signal. It doesn't carry the block signal. So you can record whatever you want crisp. One of the signals goes into, um, you know, one, one of the, it's, it's a splitter, HDMI splitter. So one HDMI cable goes into your monitor and the other one goes into your capture device that you have recording the broadcast and you're fine. You have um, the Netgear Miracast and uh, the Netgear Miracast connects through an HDMI cable. The HDMI cable connects into the splitter. The splitter splits the signal up to two signals. You take one of those signals, you put it into your monitor, your big screen TV, your HD TV, your LCD. The other signal you put into your capture device. The capture device is able to record everything that's coming out of your tablet without having that HDB, HDCP signal. So granted right here, right now, I'm telling you the, this HDMI splitter. Now, keep in mind, take note, not all HDMI splitters do this. Some splitters, they carry over the signal, okay? They, I've even had, you know, a particular model that, you know, it used to block it, but then they figured out what was wrong. And now uh, they, w within the update of the model, they, it, it start, started carrying over the signal on the splitter. And when I, when I purchased it, I purchased the wrong model number, even though I purchased the right brand. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, you have to be careful with that. The, the model number is VHD 1X2. M as in Matthew, N as in Nancy, 3D. And uh, this particular HDMI splitter negates HDCP. So there you go.